everybody, it's Josie. Welcome back to Cedar Creek Homestead. Well, these are the pens where I have my baby chickens. And um, I have to come out here a couple times a day for feed. and spe not, not the feed. I feed them once a day and they do okay with their feed. But the water, I have to come out a couple of times a day um, and give them water. They are really, really drinking the water up. And it's important because it's so hot and it's so humid. Now they're in here in the shade. They have a breeze coming through. The underneath of their pen is open. Well, I mean, it's wire. It's a hardware cloth wire on the bottom. And so they get plenty of breeze, but it still gets hot. And so you have to make sure that you keep your birds uh, hydrated, just like what you stay hydrated. I've had a, a couple of losses, um, you know, when the temperature gets you know 100 degrees with 105 when it gets to 105 to 107 on the heat index it just gets extremely hot and you ha you'll have a hard time with your birds if you don't keep them hydrated just like what we should we should be keeping hydrated make sure you're getting plenty of water too so i want to just give you a, a, a few glimpses of the little baby chickens my kindergartners and uh, then we'll move on to our other birds here's a look at some of our little babies they're in the shade and they're learning how to be chickens. But I have to come out here about, should come out here about twice a day really and change uh, their water. They're, they're, and they're doing really good with their food but with this heat and humidity, the water is what goes. And so they're growing. Uh, this is my little kindergarten class here is what I call them and they'll be the next ones if I get a little bit more growth on them, I'll put them out in the bigger pen. Not with the big chickens, but next to the big chickens. So that they can learn to be around the big birds. I have another pen here of them. You can see, and they... Uh, they're nice and shaded and they're in here and they're relaxing and and uh, when I open the door they don't stay huddled up like that uh, when they when I open the door they run over there so anyway they're trying to get away from me and so I'm I won't disturb them but they're happy little babies this is our uh, our newest addition uh, little eastern wild turkey babies that blade ordered in and and i've got three in this little pen down below me and i've got one that's hatched out in the incubator and is drying off and i still have five eggs left in the hatch er, left to hatch in the incubator and i don't know what kind of hatch we'll get we're hoping for good success but uh we we enjoy having the little turkeys we did have a good hatch hmm, i say a good hatch we only had uh, five of our bourbon reds hatch out and we put them in the incubator but um, the predators have gotten them we've had a terrible year this year with predators and our one of our mama turkeys has went to setting on a nest but she's been at back up the last couple of days she's went out in the uh, across the road is our hay pasture at, well our neighbor's hay pasture we get our we we buy the hay from him but it's but anyway, the, she's went out in there and the hay, the grass is really high and it's just kind of dangerous to be, uh, you know, sloshing around in there. And there are rattlesnakes here and copperheads. And so um, we're just going to let nature do its thing. But And hopefully she'll hatch them off. She's been up here the last couple of days, so something might have busted up her nest. And you know how it is in the country. Raccoons and, and snakes and coyotes and skunks and armadillos and possums dogs you, you name it and uh, so anyway this is one of our sweet little new babies and uh, it's a it is a little turkey and they are fast little boogers these are uh the quarter neck the second batch of quarter necks that we ordered if i'm not pronouncing them right y'all just you know don't make too much fun of me I'm just pronouncing them uh, the way I know best and if I'm saying it wrong by all means let me know down below and I'll change it but uh, this is the second batch the first batch out of all of the 
ones that we ordered, a uh, blade ordered 30 bob whites and 30 quarter nicks, turnings, however. Anyway, he ordered 30, and all but two of them died right after we got them. Now, the company that we ordered from, they made it right, and we got another batch, and this is them. And you can see they're all different colors. Now, um, their litter has fell down below, down, and what I will do is take those litter pans out and clean them, and um, so the birds stay nice and clean. They've got their grain and their water here, and and um, <coughs> pardon me, they don't seem to drink as much water as the baby chickens, but we still try to uh, to keep keep enough fresh, good water in here for them. Now. These babies are fast. The turkeys are fast. These quail are fast. And um, this is a bird netting on top, on top here um, because they fly out. And if they get out of this, in, this barn that they're in, well, the predators will get them for sure. And we don't want that to happen. And so we've got this bird netting on protecting them. And I will let you know that we're working to get our quail cages in our... Um, you know, so that we have a, a good places for them to, to be and where they, when they start laying their eggs and um, will make the watering easier for me and the feeding easier. But the company that we are very interested in, uh, their cages are on back order right now. It says they're out of stock. And so um, I've got it on, on a list to get uh, an alert when they're available. And these babies will be moving to brand new cages. They've got plenty of room right now. Their cage is a bit, it's that one that Howie and Blade built. And so I've got all the inserts out of it. And so they have a big uh, area to move around in uh, right now. They're not uh, laying eggs yet. They're not breeding yet. And so we still have time. But uh, I hope that you can see some of their pretty colors. I love that one there. Um, and they just have some real interesting, beautiful colors. And their call, uh, the first time one of them called, it just about scared me to death. I was in here working pretty close to their pen cage. And they let go with the holler, and I just about jumped out of my skin. But So anyway, here's an update on our little quail. And uh, they're, I tell you, they're really not as skittish as the bob whites are. The bob whites, they run to the the back of the cage and and they just don't really have much to do with you these little guys will actually come up to you and, and are a little bit social with you i'll show you this our two little quarter nicks that are from our first batch one of them is laying eggs and i have one egg in the house and one two three four five six eight eggs here i'm getting one egg a day and so uh so we're beginning to see some progress here with these uh, these two that we had from our first batch. Well, this is one of my little, um, two, one of the two Quarternix quail uh, that I have, and um, I think she's really pretty. I think that this this is the female, and um, she's really really pretty. Whoopsie, and they are really fast. And so I just wanted to show you an uh, up close and and personal of her and um, I'm going to get her back in the pen and so that she doesn't get away because they are horrible to try to catch they are so fast but they're so beautiful and I just think they um, they're so soft and this one is gray and white I don't know if that's really coming off on the camera really well but she's really pretty this is our little boy and uh, I don't have any names for him but uh, you can see that they they want loose. They 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 don't want to, you know, be held and all of that. But now this is our this is the second one of the two the first two that that survived, and um, it's it's a a, sm a little bit smaller than the the white and gray one. And I'm going to slip it back in the in the cage. Remember how small those quail were when I, when we first when we first got them and I was first showing them to you. Well, they're not so little anymore. And these are the Bob Whites now. They are really timid. In my opinion, they're kind of timid. Um, and they are extremely fast. Do you think the others are, I thought the others were fast. I had some of these little guys get away from me when I was 
<coughs> feeding and watering and I have a cage the cages that I have are uh, cages that you have to open the front and lift the lid the um, the door not the lid but you lift the lid and you reach in to get their water and their feed out and um, those little boogers are so fast and so I had some get out on me and um, it took me forever to catch them I finally was able to catch them um, but they um, they are super fast and uh, so anyway I'll try to show you without letting this little baby go uh, what these look like and they're about this size right here see there there she she or he wants back in with the other babies and uh, it's about this size now I'm not squeezing I don't have I'm not squeezing my little bird I'm not I'm not hurting it I'm just sh I'm just holding it here just so you can see and I'm gonna slip it back in its cage while I talk to you because I'll end up letting it loose and then we'll be in a mess so now I want to take you over and show you the pear tree and the grapevines uh, and the elderberry trees and just give you an update on that kind of stuff and then tomorrow we'll get out in the garden and I'll show you the changes that we've had there now we are having a few th issues with some of the stuff coming up really well we've planted the okra twice and I'll explain all of that to you tomorrow but some of you have asked for some updates on the birds and I wanted to give you a quick update on them and then I wanted to show you some other things that are going on with the orchard and then a few of my flowers it's hot today but it's really breezy and I'm hoping that that is not uh, uh, picking up on camera. If it is, I sure apologize for the wind, but boy, does it feel good. I'm standing here, whoa. every time I talk, the, the breeze starts up again, but I'm standing here by this branch and you can see some of the little pears that are on here. So the pear tree is doing really good and I'm expecting a good harvest this year and I'm so thankful for that. So they continue on, they're doing good and uh, and uh, we'll be looking for some of those good pear recipes. And if you have one you want to share, go ahead and leave it with me. My sister-in-law shared me a, a shared with me a pear. I want to say a pear pudding cake or something like that. But anyway, we'll be looking at that one, and uh, we may make make some pear butter and some pear honey, and who knows what else we'll do. So if you got a good recipe that you want to share with me, then uh, by all means. Uh, share it below and we'll see if we can't do a video on it well here I am at my grapevine out in the sunshine and uh, it is really 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 doing well and uh, I'm so pleased with it and I'll um, it there's just little grape clusters hanging everywhere they're so cute and we're looking forward to a grape harvest let me see if I can oh I see some right here that perhaps I can get in here with for you you see those right there they're really growing and we've got these all over the place it's just thick with grapes and so barring anything happening i think we're going to have a good grape harvest this year and uh whoopsie i wasn't in the camera but that doesn't matter so you can see i have plenty of little grapes hanging all over clustering and uh, we're going to have a good grape harvest and you know uh we thought that we had lost them all, but you can see that they came out of it. And some of you shared with me not to do anything. And I, I believe I've probably told you guys that before, that, that some of you are gracious enough to share that bit of information with me. So we didn't any, do anything, and they have came back out. They flourished, and uh, they're beautiful. And uh, we'll be looking forward to making some grape jelly and some grape juice, and, and uh, it'll taste mighty fine. I wanted to show you guys this flower bed. I had counted it as a loss this year. I thought, well, I don't have a lot of time to, to try to rebuild. And, and that freeze got a lot of things. This was a bed that was filled with things that came back every year. So I just kind of counted it as a loss. I thought that I would, uh, you know, put uh, more dirt in here and build it up more and then plan to have a better season next year with it. That's why all the grass is in here. But you can see down in here that I have all kinds of stuff that's just started coming up. This right here is coxcomb and there's tons of it. Um, this here is a zinnia and there's zinnias all over. I have cat whiskers in here. I've got sunflowers coming up. So I have never seen them take this long to come back. Uh, this is almost the end of June, but we'll take it and we're thankful that we've got something and then you can see on the outside of the flower bed 
I got to get these uh, dug up and transplanted before Blade mows because he will mow right over the top of them. You see that I have all these little zinnias and uh, I hope I'm not making y'all sick. Pardon me if I am. If you go over this way, you can see just gobs and gobs and gobs of coxcomb, uh, more zinnias, and Tex and Terry have come and dug coxcomb up to put down at their house, and uh, I have so much of it. Well, I'm sitting under my under the carport here. You can see my farm truck right behind me, and I discovered these today as well. I'm going to pan the camera down and show you what other kind of volunteer stuff I've got coming up. I have little tomato plants. I've got one there, and I have one there, and I have one over there. Now, I don't have any idea what kind of tomatoes they are, but they've tried so hard to come up in, in this that I'm going to baby them, and I'm going to get them to grow, and we'll see what we've got. I think it'll be fun. This little tomato here we had some tomatoes in here last year, all down through this row of, t of mineral tubs, and of course this one's a, a bucket, but uh, it has uh, reseeded itself, and we're going to give it opportunity to, to see what it can become. I'm just going to show you my elderberry bushes from a distance today, guys. That's what those two bushes are with the, um, the big white blooms on them, and uh, I'm going to have my first season of a real good elderberry harvest and I'm looking forward to that. The reason I don't want to go in there today is because I'm having uh, uh, problems with Sadie. She is uh, discovered that she's a jumper. Foxy runs fast but he's uh, to, you know working the cattle but he's not able to jump because uh, he was injured when he was little. He was hit by a car and it messed his hip up. He can run like a gazelle. I guess a gazelle is not able to jump and a lot of times he'll limp but you get him after a cow and boy he'll he'll you know it's nobody's business he gets he gets going uh, but he just isn't a jumper but she has discovered that she's a jumper and this fence right here we have three of them leading into our backyard at different points and then we have a big gate where we can get a tractor or a, a, a lawnmower back there and they all from here to here have an open space. Well, Sadie has decided that she can jump and she gets through here. And she doesn't mean to, but she, you know, she gets, you know, she scratches me and and, and then t twice today she got out and got after the ducks and I had to chase her down and put her back. So grandma and grandpa, they were, uh, Papa Tex and granny, they were out in the yard and they heard me yelling. Well, they thought I was hurt. And so here they come just to getting it on their little mule and uh, it scared them so bad, and I felt horrible about it. I could tell it really scared them. Feels good to have somebody care, but anyway, Grandpa found this little piece of fencing, and we've got it wired here as a temporary fix for her, so she can't get through there. So I don't want to open the gate and let her out because she needs to know that she needs to stay back there. And um, they're not, they have plenty of room to run and play. I, people worry about them. Uh, I got them a swimming pool and she chewed it up. <laughs> so um, they do have a rubber uh, trough, a big rubber trough that they use and they get in it and they can't chew it up. So the swimming pool didn't work. I'm going to have to do something else if this doesn't work. I do have this full of water for them and they get in it and then they have the fan for them under the porch. Uh, they live like royalty, I guess. But uh, she has to learn that she's got boundaries. Anyway, I've wasted enough of y'all's time and uh, I got to go in. It's hot out here. It's a little bit afternoon and uh, yeah, I don't know about where you guys are at, but Oklahoma's hot today. We have rain coming tomorrow and Saturday and I'm praying we get it. Our garden is, is doing pretty good, but it needs a rain. You can dig and it's still uh, moist under there, so we're not as dry as a lot of people, but we could still use the rain. Anyway, guys, this is Josie with Cedar Creek Homestead. I love y'all. I really do. And until next time, uh, we're gone.